It's time for AgriChat, the official podcast of the Tales of the Agronaut blog and stalwart gaming community, where we talk about stuff and things, and the stuff about the things, and sometimes gaming. I'm Belgast, and let's start the show. Hey folks, it's that time again. Time for another episode of AgriChat. This is episode 319. Tonight, I'm joined by Ammo. Hello. Ashgar. Hi. Grace. Hello. Kodra. You know, it's to my great shame that I just realized I missed episode 314 and didn't make a comment. You know, that, that is kind of sad. <laughs> I mean, I even have pie right now. And Tam. Hello. So, I'm going to kick off the show with a for sake of fairness topic. Because, <laughs> like, I've spent the last couple weeks really talking up Genshin Impact. Um... And I feel like the honeymoon is officially over now. Like, and people use that term wrong all the time as like, you're breaking up with it. But no, like, I mean, marriages continue on after the honeymoon, but like Some of them. The, the magical, <laughs> the magical period of happiness is waning. Um, so like last week I talked about hitting a wall and like, it was a hill. It was the foothills of the wall. Um, I am 35. Well, I'm 37 now. Um, Grace, are you also 37? I am also 37, and I think we've been playing about the same amount. So yeah, that says yeah. something. So when when I, I made it to 35, so 30 seemed like a massive slowdown. 35 is an even bigger slowdown. And I know I've talked about this before, but resin really becomes the limiting factor. Um, in my 30s, I still had a decent amount of the world that I had not explored. So I was finding, like, so after a point, you run out of quests, and most of your adventure rank experience is coming from opening chests in the world. And for a long time, there is a seemingly limitless font of chess for you to find in the world. But the world I is only so big, so there's actually a limited number exactly. of these. Exactly. Like, well, so there's there's a respawn, but, like, that's at an unknown rate. But, like, I don't know about you, Grace, but I feel like I'm in a very picked-over world. Yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of places that I know I need to go back to, and I'm sure that there are still a lot of chests and things that I have not found, but I have done a large portion of the low-hanging fruit and not-so-low-hanging fruit. Yeah, I mean, like, it feels like, okay, so I still find two or three chests per trip out into the world, but, like, those chests are rewarding either 10, 20, or 30 experience. And, you know, maybe getting 50 experience from a single trip out into the world doesn't make a lot of progress. So realistically, like, the daily progress is kind of gated by the four daily quests that you get each day. Like, that's and really the big chunk of experience gain. There's also random world quests, which I'm still finding um, pretty consistently. If I go out in the world to do things, I usually find at least one or two of those a day. Yeah. Um, and but, those, a lot of those repeat. Yeah. And it's not predictable, but like they're worth a little bit of experience there. But like you definitely feel slow. But the bigger problem is while you're in the crux of the game and opening chests all the time, you're getting an incidental amount of materials as you go. Cause like sometimes checks or chests give you experience books. Sometimes they give you like skill books. Um, you get a decent amount of materials from these chests as you go. And that is throttling off greatly. And the problem is, is everything that you do in the game is limited by needing to spend resin. And a fully rested amount of resin is 120. And everything takes either 20, 40, or 60 resin. 
Um, and most of the, the material farming things are 20 resin. Um, but like, it really hit me like a truck yesterday when I was looking at trying to figure out what I needed to do to prepare for the next rank of weapon upgrade for <laughs> my main character. And it takes six of a purple consumable and there's three consumables that a weapon needs to ascend to the next tier. Um, so the dungeons that I run to get that material in theory on paper can drop the purple version of this material, which is what I need six of. However, in practice, what I'm actually getting is two blues and three greens, which if I convert that equals one purple, because you can basically like alchemy up three greens into a blue and then three blues into a purple and it hit me like, I'm going to have to spend an entire rested allotment of resin just to farm up enough materials for one of the three components of a single weapon. Yep. <laughs> but in fairness... That sounds a lot you, easier than getting weapons in Dragalia, quite frankly. Yeah, so there is that. Uh, but also, once you get to the level where you can actually upgrade that weapon because they are level locked you probably will have access to the next rank of the dungeon that provides the materials and it will be a little easier so the first one that you do might feel like a giant slog if you're trying to build up to it ahead of time uh, but it's not quite as onerous if you wait and farm the mats once you've reached the next step. Yeah. Um, I, so it is, yeah, I, I'm finding a lot of places where I'm resin locked. I'm also, um, you know, when you're finding lots of chests in the world, do you have the artifacts um, and th they drop like candy out of chests. Um, now that there are fewer chests, I find that I may start to have to run the little dungeons to get those to level those up as well. well um, similarly, which feels the bad. experience books. Oh yeah, well the and the the event that's going on right now is actually a more efficient supply of those than um, than the other reliable method of the ley line things. Um, so that's kind of nice if you can if it's a day where you can spare the resin for it and it's not a day where you need to farm uh talent books or weapon materials or something else um but i you know i i've been playing this game a ton and i i've actually decided that i don't hate being resin locked as much as I think you you might, Bell, <laughs> um, because it's actually kind of nice to know that there is a finite amount of progress I can make in a day, and if I want to go around and do some exploring or something after that, I can. But it's not like, you know, when I started getting really into World of Warcraft and you're just grinding your face off trying to level or try, you know trying to get gear or whatever and there's always something else that you could be doing and you could you know easily spend an entire day just buried in the game and in Genshin Impact now it's sort of not so gently saying hey <laughs> you're done here go do something else for a while um, and that that's not necessarily a terrible thing. Yeah. I, on the other hand, have resorted to running an alt and have started leveling the second <laughs> character. Because, like, when I'm done with the 20, 30 minutes of progress that I can make on my main account, like, I I feel like I, I, I still want to play something. <laughs> well, so. to be fair, I have also made an alt character, but... The primary use of this thing is for me to swoop in on my main character once a day and collect various resources that are, you know, fairly limited <laughs> per map. Um, so that's what I've been using my alt character for. 
that was my theory. And then I got champions I didn't have on my main account, and then I actually kind of like playing. So like, so I'm playing both, and I'm running dailies on both. Um, yeah, so, that that way lies burnout. I think for me. Yeah. Yeah. That and the thing is, is like burnout. Yeah, no, I I tend to be all or nothing until I I bounce and then I walk away for a while. I don't have a healthy relationship with games. <laughs> Um, but like you can do these resin resets and you can do them six times and each time they increase in the amount of prima gems that it costs. And like, if you were doing that every day, I calculated it. It's like $11 and 20 cents worth of prima gems. If you wanted to reset them every single day. What? Ugh. But yeah, also, wait. why? Because those are the same resource that you use for polls for new heroes. Yep, yep. I don't know. Like, I, I, I find the resin system extremely frustrating. But I mean, I get. Here's the problem: is and this is this is kind of the the issue with the game in general is traditionally a gotcha game is barely a game at all. <laughs> like, if you've played a mobile gotcha game, like, and not Dragalia Lost, because Dragalia Lost was on the highly functional tier of mobile, like, gotcha games. I mean, I think that's, Some of the others are that's a too, game. Tended toward puzzle games. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, so those are, those are games, too, but, like, if you play, I don't know, like, any of the, the fantasy-themed ones... Like, there's an auto button for a reason, because, like, there's really not any game to it. And you're just clicking a button to to move things along. Um, and that's the kind of game that the energy system is really designed for, so that you don't sit there and fiddle with it all day long. Whereas Genshin Impact is a real game. Like, it's an actual proper game, and it's really fun. But it also has this weird gotcha system overlaid on it that, that I don't know, I mean, limits you to basically 20 minutes of progress a day. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the gotcha system and the the resource system are sort of, they're separate pieces. What I really wish from this game is, because I enjoy playing it, like the core loop is fantastic, the gameplay feels great, the world is beautiful, and I love exploring it. Um, I wish that there was a way to move the needle forward slightly without resin so that I could do all those things that I do that require resin. I mean, I can do them and get nothing out of it, but that doesn't feel great, you know? No, no. Um, but, uh, you know, but I like doing all those things. They're all fun things to do when they're available. So I wish that there was some secondary reward that you would get from that without spending resin. And some of them, to be fair, the ley lines have that because when you start a ley line encounter, it summons a bunch of mobs and you do get all the resources that they drop when you kill them. Um, you don't have to touch the blossom touch uh, to to get the rewards from the enemies that you kill. So that's nice. And I do that a couple times a day just to get extra bits and bobs for weapons and upgrades. But some of the resources cannot be uh, gotten that way. Well, and the problem there is you can do exactly four of those because right. they don't ever despawn and they'll basically stay in a finished state all day long until the nightly reset when you can do another round of four of them without looting them. And I think like one of the challenges for me is the absolute funnest content of the game is the boss fights. But if you're fully recharged, you can do three of those a day. Um, so you can... Yeah. Well, you can do three in a row, you, and then you have to come back later, and you can do probably another one. Right, yeah. You, you can get a total of 180 resin in a day. The cap is 120, but um, but with recharge in 24 hours, you can get 180. 
but you can't realistically spend like an evening with friends rolling from boss to boss. No, and that that's uh, yeah. And so that's one of the things that I wish. Just you know, I wish when you kill those bosses, they dropped something and maybe a chance of dropping the you know the other things you can get from the blossoms, but the fact that they drop nothing at all means that they're not super worth touching unless you have the resin for it or unless you're you know in a friend's world just helping them down it because they need it yeah i mean and i'm perfectly fine with the whole aspect of let's pop over and help somebody kill a thing but like it it kind of limits that to okay well you know we did this once a week sweet um you know because like the the really fun bosses are like the wolf or the dragon and you can do them once a week, realistically. I don't know why you say that dragon is fun. It's <laughs> fun as hell. The wolf is fun. I don't know. Like, once I figured out dragon, I've never died to it at all. Like, or even gotten significantly damaged. No, I haven't had trouble with it lately. But I, I think the wolf is a more fun fight. It but is, the dragon is more more like a proper raid boss fight, I guess. Yeah. But like that if if the game had more of that content and and I agree, like it doesn't have to be a, a, a guaranteed drop, but if there was at least a chance of getting something. So like maybe one in five kills had a chance of dropping something or because like the fights themselves are very mechanically fun. Um but yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it feels bad. Like, you can go around the world and kill all the bosses until they get on respawn. And that's something that is worth doing, just because you're going to eventually need those resources, too. But it also feels less like you're moving the needle forward. And the fight, those fights just aren't as interesting. No. I mean, because they're kind of one-trick ponies. Like, once you figure out how to negate whatever their one mechanic is... It's just a matter of minutes to kill. It's less than a matter of minutes, a matter of seconds to kill them. And depending on which ones, sure. Yeah, it's not like the actions that have both phase currencies and things to contend with. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, so here's the thing with, with Genshin is like, folks are going to hit a wall, and it may be your personal wall may be level 20, your personal, it may be 25, 30, 35. But eventually it's going to get to a point where you've consumed most of the easy to consume content. And then like the the daily routine of like play for 20 minutes sets in. Yeah, it and, kind of seems to be just the nature of this business model. But it's a shame because this game is not at all like most of the other games using this business model. And it's also a shame because I know that they have a bunch more content planned. And if everybody bounces before that comes out, that's that would be kind of sad. That that's kind of the fear I have is is right now, like Genshin has this huge zeitgeist surrounding it and everyone's playing it and everyone's creating content for it. And like that's going to last maybe a month at most before the majority of these people are gone from the game and will probably not ever come back because they'll hit the wall and they'll just be done, which is sad because like, it's a really good game. And I have a feeling that over the course of the next several months, it will continue to release content. Like basically every six weeks, they're planning on doing some kind of content drop, but the model doesn't help. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, like, there's a lot of things I would change. Like, first of all, I'd make the champions, like, direct purchase. But, um, like, because you could charge, like, nine ninety five for a four-star and, like, fifteen ninety five for a five-star. And chances are, eventually, I would buy them all. Yes, but you don't spend $1,000 hoping for a specific five-star. Yeah. No, no. Like, <laughs> and that's the thing. And while like, you are never going to do that, there are people who are. Oh yeah, like there's one guy who spent seven thousand, and there's another guy who spent five thousand chasing a specific character. 
And like even on the smaller end, like the Destiny YouTubers that have switched over and started making some Genshin content have each spent, you know, a couple grand on this game chasing whatever they were after. Yeah, that bit is slightly wild to me, but <laughs> I, I've reached the point now where I am pretty happy with my main team and because I I knew that a new rotation was going to come in starting on Monday of you know what what characters were available and um, on bonus or whatever you want to call it. I've basically been playing the game for most of this week as if the whole gotcha system just doesn't exist. <laughs> just not not making any of my wish polls, just waiting to to see what happens on Monday. Yeah, and I, I guess it's technically Sunday night around 8-ish my time is when supposedly the Klee banner shows up. Not that I particularly care about Klee, but I'm curious what the, the, the high rotation f- four stars are going to be. Yeah. yeah. And it, I mean, it would be nice to have a couple more heroes to mess around with just because they all play differently and they're all the ones I've tried so far have been really fun. Yeah, although, like, that is a trap of this game, because, like, realistically, you need to focus on four characters, <laughs> because you don't have resources much past that. No, except for the part where if you want to do the Spiral Abyss thing, which is also super fun and does not require any resin, uh, but it does require, at some point, having two full teams of four <laughs> And I want to say at some point it switches to three teams. Oh, my. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. So basically I got through the first of the two team floors by splitting my good party in half. And yeah, creating, I did this thing too. <laughs> creating two <laughs> half-assed parties. Yep. I'm not even sure I have enough characters to run three full teams. I, that I can't. Same. Yeah, no way. I mean, maybe if I stopped running missions with some of my characters, and that's supposedly something that's going to happen at some point to where your missions don't lock you from using the characters. That would be amazing. Because, like, basically, I've never used Lisa, ever. Like, from the moment I started being able to run missions, she's been the mission character. Because I have no interest in that character. (laughs) Yeah, same. But I, if I could run missions and still use the character, I would be sending Fischl all the time because she's 25% faster. I, like, there are a bunch of little things that they could do to tweak the experience to where it would feel a little better. So, like, if, say you've got your, your super powerful level 70 character, and if you could drop a couple level 1s in with that level 70 and they would gain increased experience so that you could eventually kind of drag them up a little bit. But like, that's, that's the other challenge is like skill books are really the only way to level. Like you, you cannot make meaningful leveling, by actually no. gaining experience. It's that's like, that is, that is not a thing. Like for the first couple levels, maybe, but like, you're not going to get past level 10 with a character just through, through raw grinding, unless you're just going to grind forever. I mean, that doesn't take resin. It doesn't take resin, no. I mean... I'm not suggesting but, it's a good idea. Yeah, but like, but like, say... Say you had like a 20-level gap, and you could catch characters up to that 20-level gap by just dragging them around in your party, then that would at least feel like something to where you could like at least get your characters part of the way without spending resources, but yeah. Anyway... Mostly, I just wanted to cover it again, just from the standpoint of like, hey, uh, just heads up, the wall's coming. It is going to hit you. <laughs> like, there's no avoiding the wall unless you're willing to spend a lot of money, which was the thing Thalen said, but I hadn't quite hit that yet. <laughs> okay, Tam, I don't even know where to begin with this topic. <laughs> the Ben and Jerry's ice cream of gaming. Look, I was hungry when I wrote it. <laughs> um, but like, so, okay. It comes up because 
Ben and Jerry's ice cream is the kind of thing that I have like a random craving for a lot. Not a lot, but when I have a random craving, it's for like that specific thing. And it's weird and specific. And like the other day, I dove into Frog Fractions more or less randomly and just played it start to finish for reasons that I couldn't really explain to you other than it was an inexplicable craving. I'm wondering, like, does anybody else do that? Does anybody else have like a... Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Except for for me, this is why I revisit so many older games, especially older MMOs, and I will play it for a weekend or maybe even two nights of a weekend, and then I will put it away and not touch it again for like two years. And then suddenly I'm playing DOC again, or I'm playing Lotro, or I'm playing EverQuest 2 for a few days, and then back on the shelf it goes until the next craving, or Master of Orion. And when I say Master of Orion, I don't mean any of the modern incarnations. I will play Mu 2 if I suddenly want to play Master of Orion. But like I, I feel like I pretty regularly revisit older stuff. I, I definitely have cravings, but they're not always inexplicable. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually fairly clear why I'm having <laughs> a particular craving. I mean, sometimes it's just, oh, somebody else went back to that game. Sometimes it's, wow, launched a new expansion. <laughs> but there's usually a reason. I feel like I have comfort games that are games that I have played in the past that I will go at back to. They aren't really like, ooh, this is an inexplicable craving I have, but like, I'm, I'm always on the lookout for a game that I can just sort of play and not have to give my full attention to. Or, or sort of, and not even maybe that even, but like I can give my full attention to it, but I, I don't have to think very hard or I can try something like, I, I think of the letter V six times a lot for these. And then I also think of a lot of 4X games that I'm like, well, I'll just spin up a new game and tool around in this for a little bit while I put something else on in the background. Yeah, for me, that specific thing is almost always World of Warcraft, Minecraft, um, or like Diablo 3. Those are the games that I, I go back to as like, I am feeling bad. The world doesn't make sense. I'm going to play this comfort game. <laughs> See, it's really it was really surprising to me how good World of Warcraft fit that mold. Like World of Warcraft, or not even not World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft Classic. Yeah. That game was so great for sort of just being comfort gaming. Cause honestly, like we all joked about how hard it used to be. It's not that hard, it's just time consuming and, and grindy and there's a lot of downtime and like kind of miss that like game. Like, so I like games that will let me do that and let me like sort of relax. But no, I don't, I don't know that I would say I have weird cravings all frequently. I mean, my weird, my current weird craving is a game that isn't even out yet that I know I'm going to play as soon as I can. And I cannot tell you why other than I just, I know I want to play it. Because I really want to play Bug Snacks. Bug Snacks. <laughs> it's gonna be a. It's gonna be a PS4 launch or PS5 launch t title. What is Bug Snacks? Oh my god! That's do you not. not. <laughs> I need to just. I need to send you a trailer. I mean, like it has to be explained now. Can it? Be I'm not sure it has an explanation. I was gonna say. I think what is Bug Snacks is pretty much yeah. That's the. That, what can I mean, you say? You're you're on an island where all the bugs are also food, and then when you eat the food bug, you become part food bug and also I solve problems know. of the people on the island. I don't know. This was announced as a PS5 on the at the PS5 conference. Yeah, yeah, and they just like low key said, "Oh yeah, it'll be out on the day the PS5 launches." 
I, I could not I could not tell you why I'm I'm all in for this game. It's inexplicable, but I really want to play it. And I think that like I mean, it's by the folks that did Octodad, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Which in itself was a nonsense game. Sure. I feel like I could explain that game better than I could explain this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a game that I really want to be playing is a game that I have no idea when the hell it'll release. I want to play some more New World. I had I had a lot of fun playing New World. This makes me miss uh, Marvel Heroes because that was one of my favorite. Just kind of chill out and do whatever. Oh, God, games. Yeah. Like, I mean, I get it. It's, you know, kind of like, you know, Marvel Heroes Diablo 3, but I like the kind of, you know, comic booky, silly kind of feel. Just running around Midtown Manhattan with Rocket Raccoon, you know? I mean, I feel like Marvel Heroes is one of the best free to play models. It really was. And I also feel like. A lot of people just didn't appreciate that game. I mean, to be fair, it took me a little while to appreciate it once they finally, you know, what was it, like Marvel Heroes 2015 or whatever, when they really cleaned it up? I think that's when I got into it, because, yeah. like, Phelan was back playing it again. Yeah, I definitely got in at that time, too. I did not enjoy it when it first came out. Yeah, same. But, like, it eventually ended up with this really cool model where you can play anything to level 10, but then, like, after having played a bunch of these characters, you could decide, oh, I want to unlock this one. And it was basically like, you got any one of the characters in the game for free. But it also, like, was the sort of game that I didn't feel bad spending money on. Yeah. Because, like, it was really good. Like, and, and it seemed fair. Unlike this game I'm playing right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, like... And I guess part of me was hoping that maybe Marvel's Avengers would be that kind of experience, but not didn't really end it up that way. Yeah. One of the types of games I go back to for things like this is like Warriors games. Oh my gosh, I was going to say that I love like Musou games sometimes. We're just kind of chilling out. I think like Dynasty Warriors 9 is coming to the Switch next year, and I think I'm going to have to have it. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to buy the new uh, Zelda Warriors that looks really freaking oh, yeah. good. You can see but yeah, like, the old one. It was also very good. I have it on the Wii U. I just haven't repurchased it for the Switch. It was a really interesting... It reminds me of a, of a really interesting thing that I was thinking about. Because we've had the conversation a bunch of times about how... About, like, games you play to relax. And, like, how how I don't really play, like, mindless games because they just put, put me to sleep. And I realized I was thinking about it um, because I was like, what do I what do I play when I when I'm stressed? Um, Because I like have been super stressed recently and games I play when I'm really stressed include souls like games, uh, (laughs) hyper light drifter, uh, one step from Eden. (laughs) Um, But like you're universally doing it wrong. Well, no, so it takes that. all your focus. I, though. I don't think so. yeah. I guess it's yeah. true. Yeah, like that's that's what they're doing is that like when I'm coming off of a really like high stress day, my brain is still spinning. So I need a game that's like going to catch up with that and that I can kind of like let myself down on. Yeah, like I I, I get where you're coming from. But like, I think my reactions are different. I need something that like will lull me into a calm state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was something that, like, I up until I don't even remember what conversation I had recently that made me think about it. But, um, but like, I've been playing a ton of Hades on like increasingly nonsense bonus difficulty stuff. I think another one of those for me that is kind of my gaming junk food is. Like, either returning and playing more Skyrim or playing more, like, Fallout New Vegas. Right now, for me, that's uh, that's going through more of um, Ghost of Tsushima. Like, it's probably the game that I have been steadily playing the slowest ever. Because I just wander around and I'm like, oh, I'm going to take a, take a look at, like, this beautiful scenic vista. Or, like, I'm going to enjoy this poetry inspiring you know thing or like have a really cinematic fight and then you know chill for a bit 
that would be a game like that for me, but like I've pretty much stopped playing it now that I know I've got, in theory, a PS5 on the way, because then I'll play it in prettier form. <laughs> I bet, like, that's probably the first thing I'm going to play on a PS5. And I'm actually, like, super looking forward to it as well. Yeah, like, when I'm chill, that's what I'm, that's what I, like, I like open world games when I'm chill and just feel like wandering around. And, like, Genshin Impact has also been kind of that for me. Just like, yeah, I'm going to wander around. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely way behind everybody else, but eh. You know, it's probably a good thing. I mean, because, like, there's going to be a content drop in a couple weeks, which will, I feel like, probably add in some other mechanics to make life a little easier as far as the, the, the resin restrictions. Um, they are supposedly actively taking feedback, trying to patch the system to make it a little bit more fair, but not sure how fair they want to go yet. So in theory, like the longer you can you can chill in the game, the probably the better. I'm hoping that they have some data that says, and I suspect it would say that the people who are spending money are spending it on the gotcha side and not so much on the resource unlocking side. Yeah, so, I would imagine mm-hmm. so. So that that they would not be incentivized to leave that as tight as it is. I, I feel like they're going to see a graph that as players get to 30 and beyond, they either taper off greatly or just stop playing altogether. So a game type that I don't hardly play at all anymore, but used to be my go-to for just random cravings was like racing game. Yeah. I was just that- mentioning the other day how we missed burnout. Like I used to play the hell out of F Zero like that, Um, but and I know we've talked about this before on the show to where the non sim racing game genre kind of died out. Yes, I'm upset about this because I don't care about the the sim. Like Gran Turismo was cool when it first came out, but like that is not like. And and that's even like a low end of sim as compared to where it's gone. I mean, well, first I was never really a fan of any of the realistic racing games, but Gran Turismo is pretty simmy, and like, Forza Motorsport is pretty simmy. And I I'm aware that Forza Horizon exists, but I don't think it goes far enough. Like Forza Horizon is their attempt to make a more arcadey racing game. I've tried it and I just couldn't get into it. Like, is I don't think it goes far enough. Like, you don't have like burnout level physics or crashes. Need for Speed has been kind of moving in that direction. It's like not quite burnout. I miss burnout. I'm with it. I yeah. It was so good. Such a nonsense racing game. But it was so great for it. I mean, the games though that I really miss though are F Zero and Wipeout. Yeah. There hasn't been an F Zero since the GameCube. Yeah. Well, and th- there's that game that released on the Switch that came out on some other platform ahead of it. That's kind of halfway between F Zero and Wipeout, but like Last RMX or whatever it is. Yeah, I've not played it. It's maybe okay. It's, it's maybe it's really good, but it's okay. What I, what I really want is another F Zero game. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure Nintendo remembers that F-Zero exists, except for the part they keep putting Captain Falcon in Smash Brothers. Yeah, yeah. I was I was a Samurai Goro player. Slow acceleration curve, really high top end. Do you also play Bowser and Mario Kart? <laughs> I was just thinking that. <laughs> um, yeah, actually I do. I either play Bowser or Donkey Kong. All right. <laughs> like, it's a thing that I'll do. I like that, that style of character. Hey, if we can get, if we can, if Nintendo can remember that Pikmin exists, and they're, quite frankly, barely remembering, but if they can remember that Pikmin exists, maybe at some point they'll remember F-Zero exists. I mean, I feel like they remember that Pikmin exists only because they're slowly, bit by bit, releasing everything that came out on the Wii U for the Switch. I mean, there is also that, yes. Because they really... I don't really have a problem with this, honestly. I don't have a problem with it either, because, like, I would be perfectly fine never to use my Wii U again. It was so not a good I console. Except for two games, one of which is one of the that inexplicable craving thing you just mentioned, Xenoblade X, mm-hmm. and the other one of which is uh, 
Twilight Princess HD. I'm really surprised that Xenoblade X hasn't been re-released. Me too. Because by, by, by all accounts, it seems like the other two Xenoblade games on the Switch have sold well. Well, I hope they, you know, give it a little bit of the, the definitive edition, for, like, makeover they did for the first Xenoblade, because that was really, really nice, so... Not that, do. Not yeah. that X was quite as ugly as the original game. <laughs> Fair. I'm just saying, I'm I'm sure, I mean, I have not played all of X, but it's it feels like it could use a little, a little love in some spots, a little tweaking. Yes, it could use. There's a bunch of reasons it could use some tweaking, both mechanically <laughs> and, like, I don't even know the general word for this, but things like the sound mixing was a little questionable. Some of the loops were a little questionable. Yes. Although I, I did actually like the new LA music that apparently nobody else did. Anyway. Yeah, I thought it, Xenoblade it X was, was really pretty. Compared to the first game, it absolutely was. Yeah, yeah no, it Compared is. Compared to 2, it's, it, I mean, it still looks real nice, but... It does. I There's guess I'm just thinking going... of other tweaks, but yeah. There's something going on with 2 that I just don't love. It's the character models... Like I what like the mo- I don't know they're they're not as high fidelity as say the reworked uh Xenoblade 1. They're more cartoony, I guess. I mean, that game and the remake of 1 strike me as the most anime you could possibly get in a video game. But that seems intentional? Yeah. I didn't think two was that bad, unless maybe it's just a thing where the fact that a bunch of the different blades were designed by different artists and they try to represent that in their models maybe <laughs> feels a little odd sometimes. So I guess the next topic is pretty straightforward, as in we're getting towards the end of the year, and what are we looking forward to? I've been so out so, of the loop on releases. The game of the year came out a few weeks ago, so I don't know what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking you mean forward. By that, you mean Hades? I do. I'm looking forward to Super Giant's next project. <laughs> <laughs> oh I mean, man! I, I is, think I'm looking forward to Cyberpunk. I'm not sure. It is some hard, it is some hard, uh, hard decision making on game of the year this year. <laughs> There's some stiff competition for me. There have been some I really am, good games this year. I, I am not looking toward for, forward to Cyberpunk. Because a Cyberpunk game that is anti-transhumanism is not a thing I'm actually interested in in any way. Yeah. Yeah. Among other reasons. I'm looking forward to returning to Aloy. That's not this year, though, is it? No. But I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's probably the main game that I'm looking forward to at all. Looking forward to the new Ratchet and Clank. Oh yeah, Watch Dogs yeah, Legion that. is coming out at some point. And I I really liked what they were showing off. I'm curious if it's good. It that that is either going to be a really good game or a really bad game, and I don't think there's going to be a middle ground. Yeah. Like cuz like if they if they mediocre that, it's going to be a bad game. Because, like, the concept is really interesting. Like, oh, hey, you can recruit everyone in the world. I'm I'm looking forward to FF7 Remake Part 2 because that's going to be wild. <laughs> like, do we even know if and when it is going to be? No. No. Probably after the next Final Fantasy game, which is probably two years out. I think I am actually looking forward to FF16. Yeah, I think I'm too. Definitely. I'm I'm interested. I need to see more, but I am interested. Uh, speaking of Final Fantasy 16, have you followed at all the Shardbert controversy? Uh. <laughs> N- no, I haven't. Where someone in the community managed to convince like most of Reddit and oh. Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> that the little boy's name is Shardbert. Um, what? Yeah, that's a thing. It's amazing. No, I, I missed this. 
Like, I'm sorry, they can call him whatever they want, but now from now on, his name will always be Shardbert. No. Oh. <laughs> so it's like people theory crafting that maybe 16 could be like on another shard, like a part of 14. So since, you know, the one shard had, you know, Ardbert and he's going to be on another shard. Plus uh, the, the English voice actor sounds kind of like Ardbert's voice actor for the main character. <laughs> I did hear this theory, but I did not know it had gotten to become a thing. Yeah. Yes. Well, and then somebody, somebody claims that they, he's saying that in the, the clip. Oh, Shardbert. We need to We need to not encourage Yoshi P. <laughs> I don't know, but you're probably right. Because he, he can and would troll players of both games as hard as he can. Yeah. He'll, he'll do um, it. I mean, he kind of always is. Yeah, also true. It's sort of just what he does. Yeah, like how hard has he been denying, you know, anything to do with 16? Well, at least directing 16 when he's actually been the producer. (laughs) Well, he's not the director. No, no, he's not. Oh, yeah. I'm weirdly, I'm weirdly interested in Deathloop now that I know that it's not a multiplayer game. I'm super into Deathloop. Doesn't seem like it's gonna be my thing, but it does seem cool. Like the only the only part of it that I'm not necessarily into is the fact that it's gonna be a PS5 exclusive for a while and it's a shooter, and I don't know if I really want to play a shooter on a PS5. But Yeah, that's fair. But other than that, like it, the the game looks really cool. I I admit that against my better judgment, I'm excited about uh whatever is happening with this new Lord of the Rings MMO. I didn't know there was a new Lord of the Rings MMO. Yeah, we, there's almost nothing is known about it other than it's a new Lord of the Rings MMO. Also, isn't there like a TV series launching around the same time as it that they're currently working on, I think? Because it's filming in New Zealand again? Is it Amazon or HBO that's doing it, the TV series? Amazon. I don't remember yet. In the short term, I'm looking for or Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but I probably won't play it when it comes out. What's that? Just because there's a lot of stuff happening at that same time. Like, it's November 10th or so, and, like, there's a bunch of stuff happening around that time. I'm sure at some point, the World of Warcraft expansion will get a new release date. Oh, right. That got delayed. That did get yeah. delayed. Ooh. So yeah, like there's a whole cluster of things happening. There's the Destiny 2 expansion is happening early November. Both console generation or new consoles are releasing early November. I don't expect uh, I'm going to be able to get my hands on a new console until next year. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is that same time. Cyberpunk's that same time. There's this this cluster of delays that have basically stacked everything happening in November. I'm kind of excited about, um, Solasta. <laughs> what is Solasta? D and D five, the video game. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, so I, that, uh, demo, which we got to play was odd. There's a lot of things that are odd about the demo. But, like, as far as a mechanical representation of getting to play D&D 5 in a tactical RPG, it was pretty great. It definitely feels like it's taking some big swings. Like, I think the idea is that you will be able to generate characters with their own personality matrices, and those personality matrices will drive their dialogue. Like... This means that, I mean, procedurally generated dialogue is a little off, but <laughs> maybe more than a little off. I, I do have to say that uh, that game needs to come out basically immediately so that people play it before they are tempted to jump into Baldur's Gate 3's early access. So I haven't played any of Baldur's Gate 3 early access. Should I, based on the fact that I like Celasta but not most real time? It's not real time. Oh, it's not. No, it's not real time. Oh, I should. Also, you shouldn't because you're going to want to play it more, and it's game's kind of short right now. Okay, 
I'm very like, excited about Baldur's Gate 3 then. Like, honestly, honestly, if Baldur's Gate 3 gives me an intro and on-ramp that I like better than, um, that, like, I, if it's basically Divinity Original Sin or Divinity Original Sin 2, but with an intro kind of on-ramp that I actually like, I would be huge into it. Because I, I keep trying to get into Divinity Original Sin and 2, and, like, I feel like I get hit with this wall that's, like, I don't actually want to be here. I don't actually – I want to do other stuff than what, like, the intro sets me up to do. And that's just, like, not a good way to start. And so if it I, gives me a start that I like better, I would be so here for it. So Are you having Hinterlands problems? I just You're supposed I just, to leave Fort Joy. I just don't like the intros of those games. Like, trying to get out of Fort Joy isn't fun for me. And then trying to figure out what in what the hell I'm doing. In... The first game's intro, I think, is not very good. I think Fort Joy is much better. So in the little I played of it, I like felt like I was following the path through Fort Joy, and then I got my face caved in, and I didn't really understand how to not get my face caved in. There is no path through Fort Joy, as such. There are like ten paths to Fort Joy. Yeah. Uh, the current game will at least tell you if you're taking the hard one, because it, if you start trying to do it, it will tell you that you're on a quest step called the hard way. <laughs> I I do remember like I kept and maybe again this is a game that is a little bit challenging because a lot of games will let you as the character player character like oh I want to try seeing what the, pressing this button does. In this game, frequently, if you press this button, everyone decides to kill you. Like, did you decide to be a little bit uh, smart alecky with the uh, pirate leader? Yeah, they're all going to go hostile and kill you. At least that was my feeling playing. Two things. One, I don't think that game is very good played on quote-unquote classic difficulty, which is the allegedly normal difficulty. Ah. I think it feels like a much better game played one step down. But also, um, yeah, Griff's a little rough. But they've... Nah, there are a lot of solutions to getting out of Fort Joy. Off the top of my head, there's... One of the Magisters can help you with Miko, and then we'll just give you a key to get in the back door. Don't go in the back door. The back door leads to a big fight. Uh, the elves can... If you help them, there's a way through their cave into... The dungeon of Fort Joy, you can get out from there. You can get actually thrown into the dungeon if you can get your collar taken off, and you can get out from there. Like, I really like the variety of ways to approach that objective, but since it doesn't really tell you about any of them, it feels a little aimless at the start. Yeah, and it's the kind of thing where I would, I feel like that's a sequence that I would really, really enjoy three to five hours into the game once I have my feet under me. But also, there's absolutely no question in my mind that I'm going to buy... Baldur's Gate 3. I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's going to be if we'll we'll see if I also try to find some way to acquire a fun- if it doesn't come out quickly on consoles we'll see if I can't find some way of acquiring a, a functional gaming computer for my partner so she can play along with me. Presumably it will have controller support on PC. But yeah we'll see. Let me back up. It has controller support on Stadia right now but not on the normal PC client. What? Currently, it's just out on Steam and Stadia because I I don't even know why. I guess technically that means that you could play it on a TV. It on does, couch. right? But it's not exactly a fast-paced game, so it is also probably unlikely that the Stadia client plays with the Steam client. It does. Oh, it does. Okay. This is this is Larry. They made the Switch client play with the PC client. Right, but like I had no clue if it was a Stadia thing or if it was a other company's thing as to why for some unknown reason Destiny is isolated off on its own. I don't have an answer for you there. Oh right. Bloodlines two is when is that supposed uh, to be? Next year. It, it's next year. Limbo. It got delayed. And they fired the lead writer. It's a little unclear what's happening with that game. Oh. So it's uh, continuing in the 
proud tradition of the original bloodlines is what you're telling me. I was trying not to say that, but yes. <laughs> well, I spared you and said it myself. I mean, while Bloodlines is in limbo, the the werewolf game, I guess, comes out like February. Wait, what? The werewolf, the apocalypse or whatever game that's also being developed. That is. I didn't even know that was in development. Yeah, Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood is February 4th. I know very little about this game other than there's a trailer that gives me no detail about the game itself. I know literally nothing about that game. And I like werewolves more than vampires. I also like werewolves more than vampires. So does CCP still own the rights to all the... No, Paradox owns the stuff now. Okay. Oh, wait, Paradox just straight owns it now? That makes a lot more sense why there's several projects that have come out. I feel like Paradox owns White Wolf. I did not realize that. Oh, I had not realized that either. I mean, that seems like a net positive. You would think that, but they haven't done a whole lot with it. Like, I think Onyx Path still has the rights to the books. Hmm. I mean, I know there have been, like, two games that are not Bloodlines that are vampire-related that have come out recently. You might have to just get your fix on the vampire mod for Crusader Kings 3. Oh, I am. (laughs) That's a weird time. I'm kind of looking forward to Godfall. I'm curious about it. It does look a lot like Skyforge. It looks like a a lot like if Skyforge and Warframe had a child. Yes. Which could be really cool. Gameplay-wise, I thought Skyforge was kind of cool. I, I, I enjoyed Skyforge quite a bit. I think the structure of that game was awful. Oh, it was garbage. It was complete garbage. But actually playing, it was fun. Well, progression was garbage. Yes. Progression and unlocks. Like, had that been a game where, oh, hey, here's an amount of money that is nominal that I can give you, and you're going to give me this new character to play, they probably would have gotten money from it. But instead, (laughs) I don't even know what you used money for in that game because nothing you could purchase seemed to be of any benefit whatsoever to the only thing that i cared about which was unlocking additional characters <laughs> i mean it had a lot of outfits that were kind of like the guild wars 2 non-armor outfits like the town wear outfits like that i just don't understand why anybody cares about like i don't know if my character in guild wars 2 needs a trucker hat but apparently they gave me one I'm actually kind of looking forward to the new Sackboy game. I am looking forward to that. And that's also coming out on PS4, so I might be able to actually play it. Oh, yeah. Because, like, I like Little Big Planet, but, like, would have rather Little Big Planet had a little bit more structure to it. And this seems to be that, so... I mean, this is not a, like, a creative type game. This is... Right, exactly. Like, we, made this some, is... we made some more levels. Right. I'm here like, for that. I'm, I'm on board for that. Like that was my favorite part of Little Big Planet, and it got bogged down in the creative aspect. But like, had they just given me a pretty tight like platformer, then yeah, like I would have been down for it. So Little Big Planet, like the, like the original Little Big Planet, had some punishingly difficult later levels. They did. Yes, it did. I was shocked. I was like, this game is so cute. Why is it hitting me in the face? Scarlet Nexus also looks really interesting, and I don't know what kind of game it's trying to be. I'm not sure I even know what that game is. What Like, what is that game? Yeah, I don't know what that game is. Like, it's some kind of Bandai Namco, like, kinetic anime combat in a Neo Tokyo setting thing. Was that the weird cat trailer? Am I no, confusing that was, with something else? No, that's something else. Yeah, it's something different. A completely irrational part of me wants to set up a VR headset for squadrons, but I, it's like a, it's like a bridge too far. It's just like too expensive for me to justify for just that, but I want it. I guess I'm also looking forward to Miles Morales. Oh yeah. Yeah. The PS4 Spider-Man was great. Like that game was so fun. I want to, I would play, I, I can't wait for the Miles Morales one. I will play that. That'll be fantastic. I don't know if you've seen it, but it was announced this week that when you're wearing one of the costumes that's got Spider Cat in a backpack, like during like cinematic sequences, Spider Cat comes out to help. Yes. 
<laughs> nice. This is amazing. the most hilarious and amazing thing. It looks adorable. I'm so here for this. Like that's so that's so perfect. Like I don't I don't really like Peter Parker, but I like Miles Morales. Miles Morales is just infinitely better than Peter Parker. I mean, there will be people people who will fight me about that, but like but they're wrong. <laughs> they're wrong. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like one of my favorite uh, Ms. Marvel comics was the one where like those two are crossing over from rival schools in like a science competition. Do we know if there are other spider characters that are going to be in the game? Miles Morales is in the first one as an NBC, so probably not. Yeah. Although I guess the Sony spider characters are getting, like, cameos in the third (laughs) Spider-Man film. So That's like, just I guess, weird. So who the hell knows even what's going to go on with that property? Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, Spider-Verse is a thing that is now canon, so... Like, in the movie-verse as well, so... I mean, mostly I'm just wondering, in video game, uh, Spider-Man, is Gwen Stacy still dead? Or is Gwen around? The PS4 Spider-Man does not contain an origin story, so it's unclear. She's, like, not mentioned. Yeah. I'm trying to think of if there's anything else that I've necessarily been looking forward to. I mean, obviously, I'm looking forward to whatever Starfield ends up being and the next Elder Scrolls, but, like, I feel like they're still a really long ways out. Yeah. I mean, the the thing that I am most looking forward to, and I mentioned earlier in the show, is I really want, like, legit access to a launched copy of New World. I did not expect to like that game as much as I did, but I really liked it. That's awesome. I'm, I'm I'm really hopeful to see what Nintendo does if Nintendo can figure out something else to do with its Ring Fit tech. I have. I mean, been, the rhythm game mode just sort of came out of nowhere, so we'll see. It's true. I like. I think that is really clever. I've been. I'm on like day forty seven of playing Ring Fit, and I'm really happy, and I want them to keep experimenting with this type of stuff so that's stuff i'm looking forward to yeah nintendo seems to be one of the few like really pushing the the like exercise game sphere but doing a great job and i also really like um uh what is it what is it called uh beat saber like beat saber is super fun but like more of a it's more effort to get into i mean almost by definition anything involving a vr headset's going to be yeah. Well, and I'm really interested to see what the next generation of Sony VR looks like. I mean, there there are adapters that allow you to use the current headset with the PS5, apparently. But, like, also they've said there's another one coming on the way some, at some point. Since that kind of seemed to be about the sweet spot for price to what you got. I mean, I also look forward to when the PlayStation 5 is actually available for most people that want one. <laughs> Next year, probably. probably. Yeah. I would love it if Microsoft and Nintendo could come to an agreement that allowed xCloud to be on the Switch. I feel like that's not as unreasonable as you make it sound. Like, apparently there were talks at one point, but, like, I don't know what came of them or if they're still in progress, but kind of like the PC and the Xbox have different offerings, I could see that they might need to have a different offering on the switch so that basically there's no, you're not able to get things on X cloud that you can already buy on the store kind of thing. I don't know. I mean, so far the only games they released on the switch are the Ori, if I remember correctly. Right. But you can also like play Witcher three on X cloud, or you could just Ah. buy Witcher three. Like I could see there being some of that to where, Maybe if there's a native version of the game, they don't have that on xCloud on the Switch. But, like, they're never going to have a native Halo game on the on the Switch, probably. I mean, and even though I've, I talked about hitting the wall earlier, I'm really looking forward to a Genshin <laughs> Impact copy for the Switch that hopefully plays with the rest of them. <laughs> I gotta say, one of the things the pandemic has sort of caused me... Like, I haven't gotten to a PAX... I haven't been out looking at show floor show demos. I like I kind of miss that right now. I mean, that, was, that was honestly kind of why I uh, 
kind of what what spawned the topic is that like, I've also been kind of out of the loop, and I'm like, what's going? What what's cool that's happening that I just haven't been paying attention to or don't know about? I mean, there's I... a lot of games like Solasta went on demo on Steam for a brief time during PAX, during when PAX should have been. Yeah. Uh, Chicory, A Colorful Tale, is a game that also went on demo at that time that looks really cool. I may have kickstarted that one, so it's not like I'm, like, it'll come out and I'll play it. Is it the one where you're a dog? It is that one. Paintbrush? Okay. It was called Draw Dog originally. Oh, right. I'm sad that it's not still called Draw Dog. I mean, if we're, if we're going to this sort of thing, I miss going to stores and looking at things. I mean, yes. I, I really miss chunking, though, because, like, that was a joy that I haven't done in a really long time, is going to random thrift shops and stuff, looking at old tech. No, instead you're having to find other crazy things to do, like hooking up, what is it, remote play on the Switch? <laughs> uh, I Were you the one I mean, trying to hook up the PS4 remote play on the Switch, or was that... No. That, okay. <laughs> that must have been Lyle. I mean, like, it is a thing you can do, but you have to have jailbroken your Switch. I have not done that thing because, like, I like access to the Nintendo eShop. I don't think he has either, so probably not that one. Yeah, the thing that I am doing right now is prepping for the PS4, or the PS5, so that I can preserve a 4K signal all the way to the television, while at the same time downgrading the signal to 1080p so I can record on. And like, you know, since the Elgato card that I have right now won't know what to do with it. <laughs> but that is other nonsense. I was trying to get there with swapping the fewest pieces of equipment. Although xCloud on an Android device is shockingly good. And apparently the PS5 also has full remote play support. I <laughs> the Vita know. lives. I, apparently the Vita lives, yeah. I mean... <laughs> I was very happy to find those adapters earlier this week that let you turn a, a micro SD card into whatever proprietary nonsense format that Sony uses for the PSP and the Vita. Yeah, but that requires you to have in your PSP and or Vita. Yeah, well, I mean, I already have that with the PSP. It's, I was going to say I, minus minus two. I, I mean, I might as well the Vita as well. I mean, I've got a PSTV that I can leave pristine. Proprietary formats are bad. Any other random thoughts on this topic? Then I guess we will close this out. So I don't think we have time for another topic. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the show, and we will see you again next week. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you.